My name is James Kimani. Hope you've been having a nice week. This is day five. I welcome you to Harvest Conference day five as you continue with the theme focusing on Christ. Wow, are you super excited? I am really excited. For today, we also have revivals, and I know you're waiting for it. So at the top of your screens, you have the numbers of the, of the pastors that you can reach up to and talk to them about anything that you want and anything that you have to say. I am super excited. I am so excited. How are you? How are things? And how is your family? Thank you for also welcoming us to, to your place where, where you're watching this from and also the link that has we have the link here you can also share it with your friends share it with your family share it on your whatsapp kwa status kila mahali hata mbogi yako waite wote now we are about to get into the service first of all we have the worship team with us going to, is going to take us to places munasikia places tunaenda pamoja so i hope you have your dancing shoes on and ready so let's move join me to welcome you to our evening revival meeting. Karibu sana. We invite you to get up on your feet, put a dance to your step, even as we lift up our praise. Inuka msifu bwana.
Raja Wakuna Kama Lord, you are so good and so faithful. You are full of wonder and full of glory. You are a reign in splendor and majesty. We love to just worship you in the beauty of holiness. We love to worship you because your reign is eternal. Your rule is forever. Seated shiftless on your throne, Lord, you reign over all the earth. The earth is your footstool, O God, and heaven is your dwelling place. But your word reminds us, O God, in Isaiah, that you also dwell in the hearts of men who are broken, O God, that you would encourage us, O God. We thank you that your word reminds us that you are near to the brokenhearted. And dear God, we thank you because you're right here where we are. We ask that, dear God, that you will fill our hearts with more love, that you will fill our hearts with more power, fill our hearts with more grace, fill our hearts with self-control, fill our hearts, dear God, with more peace. Everyone, dear God, of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, fill us. Fill us with more of yourself, Lord Jesus, more of you. We realize we want to be more like you all the days of our lives, but there is no way to be more like you without more of you. So we ask for more of you, more of you, Lord Jesus, more of you. We focus all our strength, all our might, all our hearts. We focus all of it to you, Lord Jesus, all on you. We ask for more of you, more of you, more. To join us as we ask for more of him. Because we can never have enough. Say more love. And I will 
every single breath yet one more time we submit it to your lordship so be lord of all lord over everything we know and that we know not that this same word we speak over Kenya this same word we speak over the nations of the earth be lord of all because this is our prayer of faith in Jesus name I bring you greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm so glad to be part of this 2020 Harvest Conference, the Focus Edition, and it gives me such joy to be the last speaker of the conference. And I want to believe you have been following us, you have been blessed, you have been keeping stock, you will go home, meditate, reflect, and allow the word of God to change you. As I think about the Harvest Conference, Focus Edition, I thought, what a, a title. It must have been prophetic. Who knew it would come at such a season, a season where focus is so needed for each one of us. And I would like to lead the, the theme verse for our conference, which is Philippians 3, verse 13 and 14. And this is what the Bible says. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. In the King James Version, verse 14 says, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I am here to remind you that we have a mark. And the mark is Jesus Christ. Hebrews 12 verse 1 and 2 says in King James, Wherefore, seeing we also have compassed about with so great crowd of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Focus is all about effort. Deciding what to focus on and who to focus on. Because what you focus on becomes bigger and clearer. Therefore, if you focus on God, there are rewards. He'll become clearer. He'll look bigger. Hence, the focus in this conference. It is so important. Actually, in the book of James chapter 1, verse 8, it says, a double-minded person, that is somebody who has no focus, is unstable in all his ways. And I'm here to encourage us, and I know throughout the conference, we have been receiving messages encouraging us to focus on God, our mark. It matters who you are focusing on and what you are focusing on. What you are focusing on should encourage you to the person you are focusing. And we have just read that Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith. And I want to say this, life is about three things. Number one, reflect. Number two, refocus. Number three, focus. There can never be a focus having not reflected and having not refocused. For every photographer, I always see them doing this. They always take a photo. They look at the photo. Then they make a few adjustments. Then they refocus again. And one more time, they focus until they are satisfied that the photo is what they had in mind. Therefore, life is about reflections. And as we look back, as you look back, like we read in the book of Hebrews, you identify two things, the strengths and the weaknesses. Where we read, it talked about laying aside every weight and the sin which doth Israel beset us. So there are things to focus, identify, and put them aside so that you may refocus better. There are also good things which you reflect and you realize when you did them, you are coming out better. And those are the things we are encouraged to do. And these ones, leading the word of God, you will hear about this until eternity dawns. Praying as long as we are on this side of heaven, it's not optional. 
hearing God's word, listening to his servants, and meditating on the same, this is a continuous process. Reflect. I say it's about three things. Reflect, refocus, and focus. Reflect. Forgetting what is behind, it must change for the better. And you know, life is daily. Praying, reading the word, fellowshipping, identify what to lay aside, identify the things you need to continue so that you may remain focused. You will never settle for yesterday's achievements because there is always room for improvement on a daily basis. And when we talk about refocusing, it's about adjustments, making changes, new beginnings, insights, and this we tap from God, his servants, and his word. No wonder Paul says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 19, I pray that you will continually experience, I want you to mark the word, continually, life is continuous, continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. Then your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you. How I pray that everyone that has participated in this year's edition of Harvest Conference, the Focus Edition, your life from today will become an advertisement of the immense power of God. Every believer, every person listening to me there, that you may decide that the word you have received will make you a better advertisement of the grace of God, a showcase of the grace of God. I would want us to have to focus on a, a case study in the book of Daniel chapter 1. We may not read all of it, but I will paraphrase. Number one, in the book of Daniel, we are brought in, uh, in touch with three young men in their teenage. And these three young men, they come. And in verse 2, I was so shocked when I read in Daniel chapter 1 verse 2. That it is God who allowed these people to be taken captive. I know I am talking in a season of COVID-19 pandemic. I am here to surprise you that God allowed it. Why do I say this? We know our God is so powerful. He had the power to stop it. So God also allows other things because he has bigger purposes. And in this case, in the book of Daniel chapter 1, he allowed these four boys and many others to be taken captive and they were taken to Babylon. And these people, these young men, I want you to imagine with me, um, they are very young people. They were separated from their parents. Maybe some of them had never lived alone. And they find themselves in a totally different land totally different country. New country by the name Babylon. That was not enough. They were given new names. They were prescribed a new menu. They were to be give, taken through a training for three years. And after the training, remember, is a training they never applied for. But they were to undergo a three years training. And after that, they would enter the service of the king. Forced labor, talk of drastic changes to young people like the many who have been participating in this harvest conference. New country, new name, new menu, new job, new, new labor, and nobody is asking you whether you want it or not. It was a total devastation. Major changes in life. Does it sound familiar in the season we are in? Some of us, we lost our jobs. And after that, we had to relocate up country. Some of us, we had to relocate and go and stay with our parents because we can no longer be able to pay a house rent. Some of us, the menu we were used to, we can no longer afford. So we are on another diet, forced diet, because the pocket determines the diet. I want to tell you, in good company, some other young men went through it so that we can draw some courage and some lessons from them. As if that is not enough, they found themselves doing other jobs. Does it sound familiar? You lost the job. Last my life must continue. And you have found yourself 
asking yourself, what else can I do in the circumstance I am in? I want to tell you, you are in the right company. And it is okay. Remember we said, focus is after you are making some adjustments. Adjustments are godly. And especially when the circumstances are beyond you, embrace change and you will be okay. And I hope up to there, we are together. That these people, they also went through what some of us have really gone through. But I'm here to bring in a few lessons. While the Babylonians who seem to have taken over and to decide on behalf of these young men were busy deciding what to do with them, like changing their names. By the way, I forgot, they had even to learn a new language. Now I'm imagining if I'm taken to, let's talk about a new county. And I'm told from now I have to learn a new language. I'm imagining how, how, how terrorized I would feel. New menu, new country, new language, Aish. new name. Sometimes they, I, I would imagine maybe they used to forget that they are, they are the ones being called. You know when you are called a new name and then immediately you are expected to answer to that name. There were all those possibilities. But let me shock you. When the Babylonians were busy deciding what to do with these young people, the young people were busy laid, laying right foundations in a new land. They were busy marking their boundaries. They were busy negotiating. The Bible says that when this, the person who was in charge of these four men, when he came and he came and said the kind of diet they were supposed to take, the Bible says that Daniel approached him and requested whether he would be, they would be allowed to take a different one. He realized there is nothing I can do. This is beyond me, but I can negotiate. I want to encourage somebody listening to me there. You can negotiate. Life is about negotiations and fit in somewhere. And maybe you could think it is impossible. They are young in a foreign land. But let me tell you, it doesn't matter where you are. What matters is who is with you. How I pray that you decide to walk with God wherever you find yourself. You will always find your focus because he will become your focus. Therefore, Daniel negotiated on behalf of himself and his friends. And the Lord is so kind. In verse 15, at, when, after negotiating about the menu, Verse 15 says, at the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. I am telling you, wherever you are, you will find yourself you are still thriving. As long as you are focusing on the right person. And these young people were focusing on the right person and that was their God. They never forgot about their God. One other thing they never forgot and I want you to observe in the whole of book of Daniel, they remained humble. They recognized authority. Even when he was negotiating about the menu, he was recognizing that he is at authority. And I want to encourage you, you want the favor of God, learn to recognize the authority under you. Wherever you find yourself, recognize the humble, the lowly. Recognize those above you. Never forget who you are. These people never forget they were captives. So they respected the authority. And even when they were defying the king, later on in the book of Daniel, they were saying, let it be known unto you, O king, live wrong, O king. They would recognize his authority and then state their stand. And very quickly, I want us to talk about three things that help these young people maintain focus in a fallen land where they underwent drastic changes. Three things, drastic changes, new names, new country, new job description, but they maintained their focus. Number one, they embraced change. They accepted what they could not change and focused on what they could change. You want to remain focused in the Lord and on the Lord, Learn to identify what is within your change and what you cannot change. And we cannot comfortably say that their world had fallen apart. Young men, captives, drastic changes. 
I don't want to imagine what their parents were thinking. Now is my son still alive? Do, now that is the, the voice of a mother or the voice of a father. But these young people, they had their own stand. They had their God. And they did three things. Number one, they embraced chains. They negotiated their comfort. Number two, they had godly values. Godly values. There are two types of values. There are negotiable values and there are other non-negotiable. When it comes to you as a Christian, these people, when it came to food, given to idols, it was non-negotiable. Because it was another way of submitting to those gods. And that is why they negotiated. But when it comes to changing of names, by the way, your name does not make you. What makes you is what inside you. The God believes that I knew. That is what calls you. That's why when it comes to name, and they were told now from today your name will be Daniel. It didn't bother them. Call me whatever you call me. I know whom I am. They never forgot their identity. They had godly values. They refused to trade their values. They were willing to start again. Lay another foundation. Create safe boundaries and excel within the boundaries. Remember I said earlier, it is not where you are. It is who you are. Because Christ in us, with us, and for us, he makes the way. The Bible says that them that look to him, Psalms 34 verse 5, that those who look to him, their faces are radiant. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, whatever they are calling you, maybe these days they are telling, they are telling us that young man has started the business. He is selling onions. It is okay. It is bringing bread to your table. Because it is actually not even what you are doing. It is as long as it's within the boundaries of a Christian, God is in it and God blesses the labors of our hands. I started by saying, number one, they embraced change, irrespective of the many things that changed. Number two, I've said, they had godly values. And I want to ask you, you are listening to me, do you have some values? Can we say of you there are some things, can people say, this one she cannot agree, this one he cannot agree, because there is compromise. If we are going to remain focused, we must be men and women with godly values. Values become your offense, your offense, your defense. That people can give your testimonies. And number three, why these young, four young people were able to keep their heads up high irrespective of being in a foreign land. Number three, they maintained the right company. Even when they were brought to a different land, they regrouped. They looked for one another. They knew the people who birds of the same feather. It looks like Daniel was their team leader, but the others were very good team members. When they are told this, they agreed. And I want to ask you, are you in the right company? Do you have a right company? The Bible talks about, in Psalms chapter 1, the kind of people who are blessed. You, you cannot entertain people who are talking against God. And I love verse 6. It's just by saying, whatever they do prospers. When you are in the right company, number one, with God. Number two, even the friends you are keeping around you, I promise you, you will go far. How I pray that whatever you have learned throughout this conference, it will help you go home, audit and edit your friends because your friends can either make you or break you. These young men, they regrouped. They used to pray together. He, they kept on encouraging one another. And I want to pose a few questions to you. How have you responded to the drastic changes that have been brought by the current season of COVID-19?
pandemic. How have you responded? I know it looks like some of us, I know I'm talking to people who literally feel like they have been uprooted. And it's like they are being, it's like they are try, trying to be replanted. But I want you to know there is hope. As long as God is in your company, there is hope. What matters is God. Focus on God. And you will make it. What excuses are you giving yourself to live carelessly until you lose your focus for the high heavenly calling in Jesus Christ? What excuses? I hope you are not excusing yourself. You know now I'm jobless. Being jobless doesn't qualify you to do whatever you think about. Being jobless is not a license. Being laid down is not a license. Doing a different job is not a license to go bribing and do it carelessly. No, it is opportunities to make Christ shine even in the marketplace. And let me tell you, when God is a partner, he will defend your business and he will bless the rivers of your hands. So we want to lay down all the excuses and allow God to shape us. These people... The whole of book of Daniel, imagine a whole book came about because of some four pe young people. Whatever had happened to them was not good. But the way they responded to the change, we are still talking about it even many years after that. How I pray that you will become a testimony. Remember where we read that we will become advertisements of the grace of God. Showcases of the grace of God, that we can look at you and say, see what the Lord has done. And I've had time, the other day I had a, a discussion with a young man, and uh, he's in the, uh, he's in the um, advertising industry. And um, he was telling me how during this season, he has found himself doing a totally different business. These days, he's fumigating places, and he's charging per square feet. And I was asking him, where did you learn this? He told me I had to go and do a crash program on how to do it. Now he's employing young people. He told me he has opened branches, even outside Nairobi. Things he have never. It is because of how he has embraced the change. How I pray that you allow the word of God you have heard to shape you and change you, and then allow God to speak in your life. Sometimes God takes away the bone so that he can give you steak. Embrace change. And you will celebrate. You, one day you will look back and celebrate what God has done. How is your company? Good company should help you love Jesus more passionately and follow him more closely. The company you are keeping even during this season if it, they are not helping you love Jesus more passionately, then you are in the wrong place. Bad company, bad company affects even your destiny. How I pray that during this season, you will follow Jesus even more closely. You will keep company that will tell you, let's go for a Bible study. You will, f you will follow a company, let's plug in to a cell, to a home group to a fellowship. Let's go back to church. By the grace of God, now we can go back to church and meet physically. If you are listening to me there, yes, don't miss out. Actually, the Bible terms it in Hebrews chapter 10. He says, do not neglect the meeting together. When it was not permitted by the government, it was okay. But now, it has been okayed. And I know the churches, the pastors, they are doing the best they can to keep to the standards given by the government, do not neglect. That is where you find yourself in the right company. Are you willing to go and do an audit of your friends? Drop every friend who is taking you farther and farther from God. These young men, because of what they did, because of embracing change, because of um, following their godly values and keeping the right company. Towards the end, the Bible says they were promoted. Let me tell you, 
when you do this, God protects you, God provides for you, and God promotes you. We are in the season of promotion. Are you ready for your promotion? Keep to the side of God. And it becomes God's business to find how he will push you forward. That when you will be giving testimonies of the things we learned during this um, unusual season, you will have a testimony to tell. Protection. They were protected. They were provided for. They were promoted. Actually, the last verse, verse 20 of Daniel chapter 1, the king was so impressed of how they did, of how they looked like. I pray that towards the end of this season, because our God is a God of season, there is no season that lasts forever. Therefore, I know even the season of COVID-19 pandemic is coming to an end. Everything that has a beginning has an end, and this one is coming to an end. I pray that we will look back and say, look what the Lord has done. I remained focused on Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of my faith. He has protected me. He has provided for me and he has promoted me. To every person listening to me, I prophesy to you that the Lord is about to promote you to the next level as long as you maintain your focus. What I like about God, in Isaiah 26 verse 3, the Bible says that he keeps in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Now that is focus. Maintaining. I know there are many things that are fighting for our focus, but let's refuse to focus on circumstances. In Matthew 14, verse 27, as I wind up, we read of a story where Jesus, again, I told you even the things that we think they are bad, God has had in it. God allowed the four the four young men we have been talking about to be taken captive. And in Matthew chapter 14, verse 27, it is actually Jesus himself who told the disciples, that, let us cross to the other side. And when they were on their way crossing, there were waves and the boat was capsizing. Jesus had a heart in it. And they were focusing on the waves and they started telling one another it is a ghost when Jesus showed up. But I like what happened? Peter dared Jesus and said, if it be you, ask me to come. How I pray that for the people listening to me there, you can dare God that you are saying that all things work together for good. I want to see the good for me in this season. And let me tell you, when Peter dared Jesus, Jesus said, come. And he came. But let me tell you, when he was walking, he forgot. He lost the focus again. And he started sinking. And when he started sinking, he told Jesus, help. And he was helped. Are you there listening to me? And you feel like you have lost your focus. And you feel like you are sinking. And you feel like you no longer know your name. I am here to encourage you and tell you, you can refocus again. And focus on Jesus Christ. Cry to him like Peter and tell Jesus, help, I am sinking. If it is you, call me. He walked. As long as he focused on Jesus, he kept on walking on the water. And I want to talk to you and tell you this. Maintain your focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you'll find a throat. You'll find yourself afloat on all the circumstances. Some have not yet come. But no matter what, you will find yourself on top and not beneath. You will not sink as long as Jesus becomes the focus. Something I like is that Peter still knew what to do when he started sinking. I hope you also know. And if you have forgotten, I want to remind you. What to do if you feel like you are losing the grip? You can call on Jesus. And Jesus is only a prayer away. So, are you there? And you feel like you are sinking? I want to encourage you. 
refocus. Maintain the focus. Let Jesus remain the focus. And he has promised to keep you in perfect peace. I hope since this conference started, you have been picking the words. And like a cow, you have been swallowing. And now you want to go and sit down and chew the card. As you chew the card, I want to declare that like, just like in that cow, the green glass will become milk. How I pray that what you have learned from the word of God during this conference will become milk because milk is useful. You can sell milk. You can drink milk. That the things that you have learned, you will meditate upon them, allow them to shape you, and you will move a level higher to the glory of God. So are you there? And you feel you are sinking. Jesus is only a prayer away. Jesus came for such. Jesus came to help the sinking, not the stable. Remember, we started by saying a double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. Are you that one who is feeling so unstable? I would want to pray for you. That you are going to gain momentum. You are going to be stable. This warfare is not just fighting. We want after fighting to be found studying. Just like Paul puts it. That our all is said and done. The Lord is preparing us for eternity. Are you there? Listening to me. And feeling like you have all almost forgotten your name. You are wondering whether God exists. Let me encourage you. You are not the first one. I'm reminded of this story in the New Testament. We all know John the Baptist. John the Baptist actually baptized Jesus. He introduced Jesus to the world. When he was coming to be baptized, he said, Behold the lamb that comes to save the world. But let me tell you, in his last days, a time came and he was doubting whether was this the same lamb? Actually, he sent his disciples to go and ask him. In John the Baptist was in prison. He sent his disciples, go and ask Jesus, are you the one or we are still waiting for another one? Are you there? And you are actually doubting. I am here to tell you, you are in the right company. It is Jesus, he's saying, I can help you. You can walk again. You can arise, refocus, and we move forward towards eternity. I would want to pray for you. You are there. You feel you are losing it. You feel you are unstable. You feel you have almost lost it. Never mind. Jesus came for you. I would want to pray for you. Shall we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for my listeners. There is that brother, there is that sister who feels like giving up, who is wondering whether Christianity makes sense. Right now, I pray, thou who restores our souls when we are broken, I pray that you would stretch forth your hand, our loving God, and revive them. Those who feel like they are sinking, won't you remember them and make them stable one more time? Maybe you are there. And you are listening to me. We are talking about focusing on Jesus. And you have never received Jesus Christ as your personal savior. You are in the right place. I would love to read you to this Jesus Christ. Are you there? You would love to give your life to Jesus Christ. I would love to pray for you. Let us pray together. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I have heard your word. I have heard and I am convicted that you are the savior. I want to wel I welcome you in my heart. Come and stay. I would want to focus on you because you are the giver of life. I thank you for forgiving my sins. Thank you for writing my name in the book of life. And from today, I will follow you. Thank you for hearing my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have made that prayer, you can get in touch with us from any of the numbers appearing on the screen. And we would love to walk with you from wherever. We can walk with you and help you to stabilize and continue focusing on Jesus Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. One more time, thank you so much for having been part of the Harvest Conference, the Focus Edition 2020. I pray that this season will go to memory reign in your diary that you will know. I attended that conference and my life 
has never been the same again. I look forward to connecting with you one more time because there are many more in the future, the Lord keeping us. Thank you very much. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. And may his countenance shine upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Have you heard about the word? Like exactly the depth of the words and how the words have been placed into your hearts. I have been blessed and hope you have been blessed. So now it, we are going on. We are going over to the giving time. Hope Umejita Arisha and everything is fine. So we are going to watch a clip and you're going to see exactly the steps that you're going to take so that you can be able to give. Bariki sana. Bwana Asifiwe, we invite you to give your tithes and offerings online via the M-Pesa pay bill 247247 under the account number 012012 or under the pay bill 864231 under the account number stating the purpose of your gift. You can also send a direct bank transfer to Equity Bank under the account 11802610647000 or you can send it to Cooperative Bank under the account 0112808163. Or to Standard Chartered Bank under the account 0102876532400. Let's pray. Mighty and everlasting Father, we come before you this day with thanksgiving in our hearts, dear Lord God Almighty Father God, for all that you have done you have done for us this week dear lord god almighty we thank you and we glorify your name father god as you have kept on dear lord looking into your word father god according to what you have said dear lord god almighty and we thank you and we glorify your name for all that you have done father even as we continually seek to focus in you dear lord we pray dear lord god almighty that everything will go on well father god in every single area of our lives everything shall go on well father god because we do know father god that you are in there in season and out of season, you'll always do whatever you have said, dear Lord God Almighty. Your promise, promises will always stand. And so, Father, we stand in your word. Father, we thank you and we bless your name for all that you have done. So we thank you, dear Lord, even as we continue with our daily businesses, dear Lord God Almighty, that we'll remember. We, uh, we are still focusing on you, Christ, dear Lord, even in our daily businesses father putting you in our hearts dear lord god almighty as we move on as we continue learning more and more father god even as the holy spirit helps us and we thank you and we bless your name because you are good and you are great for it's the mighty name of jesus we do pray trusting and believing in your holy name amen now so tomorrow we meet here for the ibada spirit night looking forward to seeing you and don't forget god loves you and so do i <laughs>